Alright, next up, full automation or at least priority mode. Okay, if you were to shoot full auto in this camera, remember in the settings I've got to go back and change that because I had that under button settings on ISO dial. I had it as command, I need to go make put that back to auto. So aperture, the aperture A, A is auto, the ISO A is auto, and the shutter A is auto. So effectively now the camera is in full auto. All right, but now the camera is making all the decisions for you. Well, this is where auto ISO comes in. And it comes in from full auto all the way through the priority modes. And it's very, very helpful. Okay, with film, we had always had one parameter set. You only ever had to deal with two things. All right, if you loaded a 400 film, effectively locking that off, that's all you had. And your exposure was determined by these two. That's how you shot. So you could fully automate those, you could fully automate one, uh, you control the other, you can fully, fully automate the other and you control the other. There were options where you're shooting, but this never changed. Obviously now with uh, an adjustable ISO, um, where you can apply again to the image in camera, you have a lot more control and this is where auto ISO comes in. So let's go into auto ISO here, all right. All right, so you're going up in your, in your menu, and you're going to what's called shooting settings. It's represented by a little camera. Uh, if you flick down through the menu, you'll go to ISO auto settings. When you open that up, you'll notice you've got auto one, auto two, auto three. Effectively, each one represents a new setting, and you can have three variations to the same setting. You have a, de a default sensitivity mode, which determines your, your lowest ISO that you want to operate. Some people like to operate on high ISOs for various reasons. You can set that higher, but I've always got it down that preference. I'd love to have my ISO shooting at the lowest possible uh, number, and I've got it as a base raw ISO, which is 1 60th. You'll notice in the maximum sensitivity, sometimes I've got this at 3200, sometimes at 6400, depending on what shutter speed I want. So, for example, in this scene here, let's go to 3200 ISO. And I don't want the camera to go lower than 1 60th, which is what I have set at as now. Okay, so that's set up that way. I go back. Sorry, I went out of that. Shouldn't have gone out. Let's go back. I go to number two. Again, my default sensitivity, 160. Now my maximum sensitivity, I'm going to keep it 6400 ISO because in the uh, auto ISO 2, I've now raised the minimum shutter speed to 125th. Camera don't drop below 125th. That's effectively what I'm saying. All right, you can see you have a lot of options there. And then the third option, again, it's the same, the top two, I have 6400 as my maximum sensitivity, but in this one, I've got it one five hundredth of a second. Okay, now remember, the one rule out of these three rules that the camera will not break is your ISO rule. If you max out on your ISO, it will start take, getting exposure from your shutter speed. Okay, just remember that. You can obviously use exposure compensation Underexpose the image to keep it where it was if you're, in, if you're in a little bit of a tight squeeze. But effectively remember, ISO is the rule that doesn't break. Shutter speed is where it will start breaking. And when it breaks it, your shutter speed in your viewfinder will uh, turn red. So you know that it's now gone below what that setting was. But you also have the option to make one of your auto ISOs with an even higher ISO. So if you are a person who shoots in that high number, I don't. I don't shoot much beyond 1600 or 3200 but you could go as high as 12,800. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Very importantly, any one of the buttons that can be programmed as a function button can become your auto ISO button. So the way I shoot, it's my front button here. You'll notice when I push it, it shows those. And all I've got to do is go to one, two, three. I can use this, and I don't have to select it once I've got it. As soon as I hit my shutter again, I'm in that mode. So very quickly, I can drop from a minimum shutter speed of 60th, 125th, 250th, 500th, whatever it is, whatever, whatever I've set my auto ISO to. Very, very helpful. So for now, we have really um, good control, at least a high amount of control in the priority modes, the auto modes. And this has really changed the way I shoot. So now I'm at the wedding. I'm no longer doing flash work. I'm going around the reception. It's an outdoor, not reception, sorry, ceremony. It's an outdoor ceremony. I'm shooting it as it goes. I don't want to worry about making multiple adjustments continuously. Um, this is where your exposure compensation dial comes in.
All right, so effectively what I would do is I go full auto shutter speed, full auto ISO, and all I'm doing is I'm shooting like this. Uh, depending on how many people I shoot, I'm just adjusting my um, aperture, depending on how much depth of field. If I'm going close, I want to get this extreme shutter depth of field. I just go 1.2, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just shooting, and my camera makes sure that I don't go beyond the ISO that I've set and don't drop below the shutter speed that I've set all the time. If I find that 60th is a bit hectic, all I do is I hit my front button there, Go down, go to auto ISO 2, push back up, and I'm shooting now. My camera won't drop below 125th. It's as simple as that. Now, all the, the adjustments that you're making to exposure, meaning going one over, one under, is all done through exposure compensation. So by, especially because it's a mirrorless camera and you're getting a live preview, just by adjusting this, your image is getting brighter and darker, but making sure that it's keeping to the rules that you've set in auto ISO. This is the fastest way, there is no faster way to shoot, especially when portraiture, walking around people, groups of people. Uh, there is no quicker way of shooting than this. Especially with the mirrorless camera, you're walking away with almost 100% accuracy from an exposure point of view. And all you've got to do then is sift between the images and find the ex expressions or the, the moments that you cap captured as your reason for keeping the image. It really, really is helpful. So again, as a, a, as a strong photographer, as a professional photographer, someone looking to improve their photography, understand that you should know all the features, not just one. Now there's variations to the priority mode. The, one, the example I've given you here is called aperture priority because effectively I've automated these two within the parameters I've set in auto ISO and I'm making creative decisions based on depth of field and my aperture. All right. Well, there's another way. You could... You could walk into a situation where out of all the auto ISOs that you've chosen, none of them at this point are where you want it to be. Meaning the 1 500th is not quick enough for a scene that's just developed in front of you and you don't have time to go into the menu to adjust that. Well, it's simple. Don't worry. Just go to your shutter dial. Turn that to 1,000th of a second or whatever it needs to be. Keep that on auto. And effectively by doing that, you now have... Aperture and shutter priority working together with just auto ISO running. And the rules that you set in auto ISO, the shutter speed rules fall away now because now you've got it manually set. But the ISO maximum sensitivity and default sensitivity remain exactly the same. It'll keep running. All right. So not only can, if you're not a fan of priority shooting like aperture priority, not only that, you can be a partial priority shooter, meaning shoot your ISO and auto, control these two, and all you've done is you've taken the responsibility of this dial controlling or, uh, ISO and you've shifted it onto exposure compensation dial. But because you've set these two and they're set in stone, when you brighten and darken your image, the camera has to look to one of the parameters to find that extra, uh, you know, ability for exposure. Well, because this is automated, your exposure compensation dial takes over there. You remember what I was saying earlier? There's a reason why this is on the left-hand side of the camera. You don't want to be bringing your hand up like that to make adjustments. If someone says to you, you know, you should be doing this instead of this, there is no difference. That's just called a different name. It's, got, it's called exposure compensation. You've effectively made that button, that, that, that dial, that dial. Because now while you're shooting, ISO, ISO, shoot, 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 ISO. Keeping where you want your, so you, let's just say you go 250th of a second, you're shooting at F2, and all you would have been doing before is this. Or you'll be going this with the dial front, depending on how you set it up. All you now have to do is this. It's effectively changing ISO. It's doing the exact same thing. So there's so many different variations to shooting priority mode. It's not simply um, aperture automated and then hope that the camera behaves the way you want it to do it. You know, with auto ISO, you've really made some massive changes and adjustments to your shot. There's another shot that I did, and uh, it's got to give a big thank thanks out to Greg Hack from Hack Media. He got me on board this job. This is uh, me photographing one of the uh, Proteas, which is the South African hockey women's team members for a shoot at Investec. Here it's all about off-camera flash and it's daylight. So in, in this shot, I wasn't using the system. I was using the 50, the GFX 50R, but it's the same principle. You know, um, I'm using high-speed sync because I didn't want to use ND filters and I wanted to keep the shutter rate up. So if I remember correctly, I, sh I set it to 1,000th one, one of a second. I set up two flashes, one hits hitting her from behind on that left-hand side of her face, or her right-hand side, but our left-hand side of the frame, and one hitting her on the right-hand side of her face. Set up in a way that when the hockey stick comes up, the hockey stick doesn't throw a shadow 
on her. So that's something to think about as well. Very simple in this situation. Um, you know, we've you've you've set up your shutter speed where you want it to be. I determined what aperture it was. I believe it was f4, if I'm not mistaken. f4 gave me enough to have the stick in focus because I was shooting with quite a long focal length. The, f the stick was in focus as well as her, and it was reasonable, maybe about a meter or so of focus around her. Just to get more detail, one of the spray of water to also have a lot of detail. So I shot at, I think it was either 4 or 5.6. And then all I did was let the um, ISO sit at auto. So in the setup, I was just taking my exposure compensation down by one stop to darken the background so it doesn't look like it's the middle of the day because this is like the middle of the day. I've now taken the harsh light off her face because I've underexposed it and I've let the flash do the work and I've just powered up my flash accordingly. And it's a relatively manual setup except for the uh, ISO setup because the light was adjusting. It allowed me just to make little fine adjustments just with my... Um, exposure compensation dial and I was able to get these shots another situation I was in was um, I did a shoot with Sir Richard Branson and I was besides the other work that I did and also got to give a, th a big shout out to Greg for this one as well he brought me on on this job um, yeah, I was asked to do additional photos outside of my usual work because uh, I possibly could have used things for the um, magazine and they gave me an idea they wanted him on a couch natural light, nothing too hectic, no off-camera flash, things like that. So he gets up super early and he said, listen, he's got about 10 minutes or whatever it was, 15 minutes at this time. Can I get some shots of him? So I said, no problem. And in those situations, it's, you know, go simple. And the simple way is going full auto both on your shutter and your ISO. Set your parameter in auto ISO. I think I said it don't drop below 125th. So I knew at no stage would I ever drop below 125th. And all I was doing was making aperture adjustments and exposure compensation adjustments to get the exposure I want here. It's obviously quite low key, so what I'm doing is I'm exposing for the highlights, so the shadows are quite dramatic. Low, you know, so it just brings a little bit of drama to the image. Quite a simple image, but that's all they wanted in this particular situation. And that's all done in full aperture priority. Um, manual mode in that situation for me would have overcomplicated it. I would have been thinking of multiple things where I didn't need to think about it. I knew, and I knew there was enough light for my ISO not to be too high. I knew that there was enough light for me not to drop, drop below 125th, and I was happy to handhold at 125th. I think that shot was taken on the 35 1.4, if I'm not mistaken, not this lens. But you get an idea. So it's important to understand when and why you do shoot in different modes. And I would urge you not to think that one mode is the only way that you should be shooting. That's a ridiculous way of thinking, in my opinion. You need to understand all the modes, and you need to be willing to understand them. I mean, there, there are world-renowned photographers who shoot full auto, not even aperture priority, because they're very subject-driven. and not Their creativeness doesn't come necessarily from depth of field. or I think it's all about framing and it's all about subject. And they don't want to be worrying about anything in the exposure. They just want to know, you know, using the exposure compensation, are they getting the shot that they want? And I totally understand that, and I'd never stand there and mock it, because there's nothing worse than being that person who says, oh, this is the only way you should shoot. And then you stand next to someone and they're kicking your ass and taking better photos, and they're doing it in a priority mode or an auto mode. So... Yeah, I think it's um, it's a good lesson to all of us, you know, just to learn as many things as you can. You know, there's, there's still a lot of things I need to learn, and I'm always willing to learn. And one thing I know is that, you know, the better you understand this machine, this, this great piece of gear, the better you will be, because you'll be able to handle anything that gets thrown at you. And that's really the, the test of a good photographer. It's not just your ability to take a great image. It's how you deal with people. It's how you deal with fast-paced environments. It's how... You need to do this in this amount of time. How do you do it? And that takes experience. It takes time. But it takes understanding your camera. I hope that this was helpful. I really do. Um, please do ask any questions in the comments section. You know, I know not every camera is set up this way. And I'm sure that it would be simple enough in most camera systems to figure out what I've been talking about, how it applies to your camera. They, you know, but behind all these buttons and dials, effectively, the cameras all work in the same way from an exposure point of view. Uh, from a Fuji perspective, I just love it. I just love being able to control my exposure in this way. It really does feel like I'm making an image as opposed to, you know, just taking it. I know it's a bit cliche. Um, but, I, you know, since I've been using Fuji gear, I, I really feel, you know, this whole process is really special and I really, really enjoyable. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Hit that notification button, the bell icon, and you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Oh, <laughs>